say she is just the biggest star in the firmament. She's a goddess. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ellen MacArthur! <laughs> This is... My life is complete. But every single week, every week since this new type of Top Gear started, every week I've said, we've got Ellen MacArthur on this week, and every week now we haven't. You're always on a boat. It's a problem. I mean, even this week, where have you been? I just got back from Brazil, just on a race over there from France. Finished uh, about a week ago. You've got the world record now, fastest person ever to sail around the world. And... Obviously, we've all seen those things on TV and we've all read the books. Well, I've read them just... <laughs> the thing is, is I want to talk about the Southern Oceans, OK? How big are they? Uh, they're endless, I think the easy way to say it, because they go round and round the bottom of the Earth. So the wind the, does? The wind, the weather, the waves, everything. Because there's, in the Northern Hemisphere, where we are, there's land mass. Yeah. And the, the storms are stopped by the land mass. But in the Southern Ocean, the, there's nothing to stop the storms. They just roll round and round, so the waves get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's incredible. So how big? How big? <sighs> mm, twice the height of the studio, I reckon. Well, that's it's what, no, it's more than 30, 60 feet? So. 60 feet, yeah, I'd say 60 feet. And they're very, very long, so they're big, but it's like, uh, it's like going down mountains, but, but quite kind of rolling mountains, and then suddenly you'll get a really steep one, and they're the ones to watch out for. Because you just... Because you just go down. Nose dive straight in. Which, which in the daytime is not too bad, because obviously you can see where you're going, but at night time, you can't see anything. And the sea, of course, is constantly changing. There's no sense of rhythm, is there? There's no sense of, right, I'm used to this now, because any minute now you could have a really huge wave. Yeah, there, there are definitely freak waves, and you do feel those, and you, well, you hear them, when the force that they hit the boat. But also, it, with a multi-hull, it's harder. The, the B&Q, the boat I took around the world, has three hulls. So it's like having, um, like a car having six wheels. You know, something could hit any one of those six wheels, and it would be affected by it, and, and it's just the same with the boat. So you can never really predict what the boat's going to do. You know, sometimes it's, she's about to go, and then suddenly the other hull gets hit. And it's very, very violent, the motion. And you don't even get any sleep, do you, on these, these massive voyages? We're not really what I'd call a good eight hours, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously <long>. not, no. <laughs> no. Quite a long way from that. It's, uh, it, that. The sleep is the single hardest thing you have to deal with out there. Harder than the waves, harder than fixing things, harder than um, everything. It's just, it's just the sleep, because it's, you know, sleep, sleep deprivation is used as torture. And when you really can't sleep, because, you know, your life's in danger if you do sleep, uh, you really suffer and you're, you, know, you, you really tough it out. Well, how long would you sleep for, then, in an average day? Uh, depends. Down there, anyway, in the Southern Ocean. There's a period on in, during three days where I don't think I slept for more than 20 minutes. That was, just, that was it horrendous. It is, it's God, isn't it? It's just, it, and you're 24. I mean, I know, because most 24-year-olds... 29, 29, then, yeah. was. <laughs> most 29-year-olds are in bed till lunchtime. <laughs> oh, going, uh, going <laughs> clubbing. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever got to a position when, when you thought, I really want to give up, actually. This is just too much like hard work. No. You've not, never been in that position? No, not at sea. At sea, you know absolutely why you're out there. You just have to do your absolute best until that finish line. And you have to pace yourself, you know, you have to see how, how long do I have to keep this up for. I mean, you know the one thing that's for sure is when you finish, you'll be absolutely exhausted. Oh, well, yeah, you bet. I mean, the, the lovely one I know you're always saying is about um, how people sustain you by sending you emails, you know, into the mm, that was ship. Incredible. But they do, don't they? They really do, yeah. My favourite one, I'll just share it with you, OK, was one of the emails we picked out, which is, uh, Dear Ellen, this was from some bloke in England, you're such a gutsy girl that I felt I should be doing something with my life. So I went into the shed, fixed the lawn mower and mowed the lawn for the first time in two years. <laughs> So you had a profound effect on him, whoever he was. Oh, cool, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, I've tried sailing, obviously, and, um... <laughs> yeah, I have! <laughs> no, you know those Hobie cats you went on the beach? I had the most monumental crash in one of those. <laughs> Honestly, you're butting along... How fast they go? 20 knots? You you maybe, yeah. Big, 29-foot the... thing. Yeah. It was a 20 knots, and I had a harness on, I was leading over, and one of the hulls dug into the sea, so you yeah. catapulted off. It stops off. very quickly, doesn't it? Co absolutely stops there, but I carried on. 17 stone of me in my harness, go five-point thing, 17 stones stopped by my testicles. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get that right. You say, you don't have that, of course. But have you had any big crashes? I mean, bigger than that, for example. Uh, yes. I've but they the, just stop. I've done the same thing in a 60-foot tram run. <laughs> Were you strapped onto it? Straight over the top. Were you actually harnessed on? No, we were inside. There's a little cabin, like a little capsule in the middle where you can, you know, basically get out of the weather. There were five of us on the boat, and literally, uh, one of the... The boat steered by rudders, and uh, one of them kicked up, because it was a kick-up system for security, and when we turned the boat to try and slow the boat down, 
a wave rolled underneath, went straight under the middle rudder, so that came out of the water, and so we just went straight over the top. And one corner of the boat, as you go over, because you kind of go over diagonally, mm. would have been about 70, probably 75 feet off the water. And so you were inside? I was inside, so the whole world goes upside down, and left becomes right, and right becomes left. And, and that hurts it goes, and when it, goes, it lands? It goes dark as well. Underwater? Suddenly, it, suddenly it goes dark, because you don't have a light coming through anymore, because it's, yeah. So you're underwater, and that must hurt like hell when you landed. It's a big thud, because it's a huge framework to go yeah. over. And I'm just staggered at everything you ever do. I'll tell you what it is. is I once did this show ages ago about what it was that makes the human race advance, and you're one of those people who just, rather than sitting in the cave going, oh, this is quite comfortable, he actually goes, well, what's in the next valley? I mean, without people like you, the human race simply wouldn't have become what it is. I can't just sit at home. I can't do that. Mm. I'm presuming that's what you'd think I'm not. I'm not very good at sitting at home. I'm, no, not very good at, I'm not very good at not doing anything. I'm not very good at holidays. I can't really... I don't switch off very easily. I really? really need a project. Yeah. So you see, I'm brilliant at that. <laughs> <laughs> I am the world champion of watching television. I'd still be sitting in a cave going, it's all right, this. <laughs> for you having said, no, I'm going to go and discover South America. And that's why, you know, we should all be grateful to people like you, because we would still be eating deer and wearing fur. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I want to see how you did on your lap, obviously. How was it out there? Um, the first comment has to be, I think I could have done a bit better. You could have done better? I was, I was pleading for another lap. At the end of it, it was... It was <laughs> I said, please, can I have another lap? <laughs> they said, no, 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 that's, that's it, Ellen. Please, can I have another lap? Well, and it was it... going dark, actually, to be brutally honest <laughs> with you. It was like, very difficult to film someone at night. We yeah. just see the lights go by. That'd so... be fine. I've been perfectly happy with it. Do, just to show you how competitive Ellen is, actually, you did actually ask the producer, have I got the same amount of petrol in my car that everybody else has? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> to tell you, it's a Suzuki Liana, it's got 80 brake horsepower, it makes no difference how much <laughs> petrol is in it, quite frankly. Uh, anyway, should we have a look at Ellen's lap? Yep, here we go. Let's, uh, let's have a look at this. Because you really, you've never really wasted much of your life actually um, driving cars, have you? No, well, I'm at sea for six months of every year, so... No, I look back at your car history and it was completely unspectacular, so where <laughs> did you learn to drive? That was quick. I didn't say much in the car, I'm afraid. No, I can imagine you were constantly... You haven't wept yet, that's another... <laughs> Did, have you learned all this then just today from the Stig, or...? He's pretty good as the Stig. Yeah. But you've never done anything like this before? I uh, three times on a go-kart track. Because these lines I'm looking at are bang on. Look at that, ready? Ooh. No, that is, honestly, that is... Ellen, this is impressive, I've got to be honest. Look at that, <laughs> tongues come out. <laughs> lift, did you lift off there? <laughs> no, no, you're fine. Looks no, worse from outside the car, actually. <laughs> I promise you, this is quick. Oh, here we go. Second to last corner. That's beautifully cut. Smooth as silk, that one is. Gambon. Oh, this is a bit wide, but quick. you got to be honest. And there we are, across the line, everybody. So, where do you reckon, then? Well, the, the question is, do I have to put it on there because I'm small, or do you have to put it on there because you're tall? Oh, <laughs> trust me, I have to put it on there. After a lap like that, you're knocked down with... We'd still be sitting here waiting for Wogan. <laughs> <laughs> here he comes. No, no, you're, you're, you're tall enough not to be able to reach it. I've no idea. I really don't. All, all, I, all I know is I'd have, I'd have liked another go, so... <laughs> and this is a much bigger challenge than anything you've ever done before. I, I, pre I, I appreciate that. I was pretty nervous out there. You I, were this, nervous? This morning I was nervous, yeah. Of course you were. There's 250 million people watching this, and <laughs> nobody watching it out at sea. You did it in one minute... 46... <laughs> point 7. Oh, you've done it! It is emotional, that, because, I mean, there's all these... And that is a stunning... The other thing I have to say, the, that's why we didn't let, let you do another lap. <laughs> well, can I do another one? Not a lot of point, love. <laughs> You've just beaten me. You did a 147 on your first one, 147 exactly on the second, so exactly consistent lap times, and anyone knows anything about driving, that's the key, yeah. and then popped in a 146.7. Quicker than Jimmy Carr, fastest person ever. <laughs> your life is now complete. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Ellen McCarthy.